Hello everyone, today I'm with Mr. Jerry Rao. We're going to be talking about his latest book, The Indian Conservative, A History of Indian Right-Wing Thought. Welcome to the Quinn, sir. Thank you so much, Eva. Uh, we'll just dive into it. When you broached the Ayodhya topic, uh, you, you, you speak of how you think law drama is central to the entire country's consciousness. Um, I just wanted to understand more what you, what you meant by that. Yeah, I think the Ramayana is an ongoing kind of part of Indian culture in every language. Mm -hmm. There is a Ramayana. So Ram, uh, Ramayana, the story of Rama is, is pretty much, and I, it turns out it's also see, it seems to have uh, osmotically gone across to countries like Thailand and Indonesia. But certainly in India, it is Rama's country uh, in terms of the, the cultural geography. There are innumerable places all over the country where people will say, ah, Rama came here. He shot uh, an arrow in, in, in the land and water came. Even in, in Mumbai, where we're sitting, in Banganga, that's the legend. The legend is Rama shot an arrow and in Banga, Banganga, the spring gave forth water. There's an identical legend in a place called Nama Chilme, uh, near Tumkur, near Bangalore, where Rama is supposed to have... So, this is kind of there, uh, very much part of our cultural geography and our heritage. Um, and it is pretty central to the way uh, Indians think of India. Perhaps for the lack of a better word, give any weight to the Ayodhya topic itself, the whole debate around well, it. Well, the, the, I think the Ayodhya, and I've talked about it, the Ayodhya is just used very simple. Hmm. In some sense, it's a political thing that happened right. uh, when a, an old buried controversy was reopened in the late 80s. But the controversy goes back a long time. Uh, within a short period after Dalhousie's annexation of Aud from the Nawab, uh, the Hindus of that part of the country started trying to either through legal means or other means assert uh, their kind of uh, interest uh, in, in, in Ayodhya and their belief that uh, the site of that mosque uh, was where uh, the, you know, they, they had some sacred kind of uh, uh, relationship with. But just from, from what I thought personally was, I, I felt like a lot of your angst was directed towards the Congress and you've not really spoken too much about perhaps what I think uh, the BJP itself was sort of um, capitalizing on it yes, was the word no, that I you used. Yes, I mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, that is your I word. I there's the a word tide in the affairs of men. But very and, little, and BJP right? BJP took to, the wave. It, it keeps took the going wave. on, yeah. Took so the do wave. you think that was... It's a political, hey, come on. It's a, <laughs> it was a political gift to them and they would be stupid not to take it. I mean, if you're in but politics, But is it so simple you have to, to just take call it opportunism? Of, in, in democratic politics, that is the kind of gift uh, if you're given. Uh, you, and if you don't take it, then you would be politically not as you. You think certain gifts, perhaps, you should be a little more sensitive about? I'm just describing politics as it happens here, because this is not about uh, uh, normative stuff. I do think that the uh, the, uh, the demolition, and I've talked about it, mm. that uh, the illegal demolition was, was, uh, was something that's a matter of great concern and anxiety, uh, because you don't go and pull down a building. Uh, pretty violent. That has a lot of dangers. Once that gets legitimized, you never know where the, uh, that that can end. That's that's one of the um, negative fallouts of the whole Ayodhya movement. Mm -hmm. But the positive fallout also was the whole issue that you earlier brought about of what caste. There was a great deal of involvement of Dalits and lower castes. If you were to weigh the positives and the negatives, wouldn't you say perhaps this could have been avoided or done in a better way at least? I don't know. Such I don't I am not sure there was any easy resolution to this issue. So you agree with Bankin Chandra Chattopadhyay in your book a number of times and he had a traditional school of thought that thought that Britishers if they probably stayed back a little longer would have done more. Uh, I to quote, they said, before a strong Hindu revival was in place. Do you agree with that? Uh, my position is that Bankim is the father of one of the strands of Indian conservatism. The strand of Hindu nationalism, mm -hmm. pretty much we can say he is the original patriarch of it. Uh, and uh, what was the quote you mentioned? They probably wanted the British to not withdraw so early. Yes, if you read Anand Mutt, basically 
the impression you get at the end of it is that there is something providential right. about the British connection with India mm -hmm. and uh, specifically that it would help a Hindu revival. How long would, do you think would that have taken? And what would that tangible Hindu revival be like? It's a process. I think essentially the view of those people at that time, people like Bankim was, that Hindus had uh, um, regressed, deteriorated, uh, decayed, uh, and therefore there was a need for a Hindu renaissance. You also speak of how you think um, Hindu nationalism supports the idea of a band of brothers. Well, I'm just describing the phenomenon All right. that that's and uh, that it requires to be given uh, uh, credit where it's due and no more, no less. But do you right. think taking it as something that brings people together is, is is too positive a way to look at it, considering that a lot of take something like mob lynchings, right? What do you think when people misinterpret? the establishment of ideas like that. The issue that you bring up is interesting. Does, does that always, can it be a positive that we, we unite people across castes? Does it then have to become a negative that we are therefore against someone else? Mm -hmm. And that othering is what I call a pathological feature of many nationalisms. And that's a danger that people can get into. And I've always, I've mentioned that, yes, you that I think the othering of Muslims yeah. would be a very dangerous way of uh, projecting Hindu nationalism. And in the, in the long run, will actually uh, hurt Hindu nationalism. Okay, uh, I also had some questions. Um, your views on feminism. Uh, you said people are indulging in shrill sloganeering and are actually diverting attention away from practical reforms. Can you yeah. talk more about that? Yeah, I, uh, specifically I was talking about Jyotiba Phule mm. and Bhandarkar and Ranade getting together to right. do something constructive, not mm. just shrill anti-British sloganeering, but to actually build schools uh, to help women, particularly in those days, widows who were being discriminated against mm. uh, and actually doing constructive stuff. Uh, I contrast this mm. with the, the, uh, the ideologues who don't do anything constructive. And I think conservatives generally tend to be uh, not uh, simply looking at criticizing, uh, but also doing something constructive. And, uh, uh, but isn't criticism itself also constructive no, in no, many ways? No, it's most criticism that comes from this uh, Marxist uh, postmodernist school is not constructive. It is stupid. It is destructive. It's uh, it's it not constructive. To have, it is. To have it is because it's anarchic. It encourages uh, uh, pulling down stuff rather than building stuff. Of course, you did speak about the othering of Muslims and perhaps other communities. But uh, if for you, the Indian conservative could better their ideas. The if you look at the book, the, it's a, it's a lament for the death of the Swatantra Party. Hmm. And my view is that while the Swatantra Party may have disappeared, those of us who believe in Burkean conservatism, we need to operate with caucuses within the BJP, within the Congress, to influence them towards Burkean conservatism. They are not perfectly there. Uh, we have probably a little bit of a better chance with the BJP than we do with the Congress because they have become extremely left-wing in the last few years. Uh, but nevertheless, we can't give up. I've mentioned that. Mm. Uh, our job is to keep working, mm. to move them in that direction. The likelihood of a revival of Swatantra is very low, is what I argue. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.